Okay, welcome everyone to my uh, Aspire to HE discussion on chemical reactions. So, essentially, what is a chemical reaction? Well, essentially, chemical change can happen a lot, and it does happen a lot. If it didn't, then chemistry would be really rather boring, so that's quite a good thing. Essentially, what is a chemical change? It basically is a change of one or more substance into one or more new substances. So, essentially, making new materials from um, what we call the reactants or the starting materials. So in other words, these starting materials will react together to give you a product. Okay, so a chemical reaction in a very simple terms is given as reactants going towards products. And if we were to sort of quantify this, of course, then the amount of product formed is the yield. The importance of the yield is essentially because if a yield is too low, then you may not want to continue to carry out that chemical reaction you may want to improve the reaction conditions to improve your yield and that's something that chemists working in laboratories are always trying to do of course there are reasons for this financial and of course environmental implications as well so if you can do something or make something in larger yields using less harsh conditions then that's a fantastic thing for the environment and the bank balance OK, so before we talk more about chemical reactions, we need to recap on chemical bonding. I did. Uh, I will upload a chemical bonding discussion in the next uh, half an hour. And so chemical bonding is essentially uh, these bonds are what keep atoms linked together. OK, so they're connected. Without these chemical bonds, they would fly away and everything would be a vapour or a gas. And therefore nothing would solid would actually exist or nothing liquid would exist either. The reason that these bind together is because the valence electrons are involved in bonding. The valence electrons, remember, are just the electrons in the outermost shells. So in other words, they're the ones that come into contact with each other if two atoms come together, like in this di uh, diagram down here. So in other words, the atoms are moving together. The valence electrons at the outer boundaries encounter each other first. And essentially, during these reactions, um, the electrons rearrange and redistribute between the atoms, essentially making themselves more stable. So in other words, trying to give themselves full valence shells, as again I discussed uh, on a different talk. So essentially, a chemical reaction is driven by the energetically favourable production of new bonds. And these will occur if it's energetic, energetically viable to uh, despite the need to break bonds within the reactants. So even though you have to break bonds within the reactants, these chemical reactions will still occur very often because the energy given out afterwards by producing lots of new chemical bonds far outweighs the bonds being broken. So what happens when molecules collide? Well, several things. Nothing may happen. Uh, they may sort of bounce off each other, of course, but they may not have enough energy to react with each other or they may not wish to do so okay for instance the noble gases they've got full valence shells and therefore they're not very reactive at all because they're happy they've got a full valence shell they do not need to rearrange or take electrons from another atom if if two atoms do want to bind together then there could be a physical change so in other words there could be an emission of light uh, so this is sort of photophysics a good example is the luminol which is a chemiluminescent reaction where where a reaction happens and then the, the new material emits light. Okay, It could be a chemical change, of course, where one compound is actually changed into another as well. And this will often give you, for instance, a colour change, perhaps. Uh, maybe a gas is produced. Maybe a new solid is formed. And maybe it's an exothermic reaction that gives off a lot of heat. So examples of which would be, for instance, a gas being produced could be the sort of elephant's tooth or elephant's toothpaste sort of reaction here between baking soda and vinegar or more important aspect is or important reaction would be the uh, the reaction that happens in an airbag where basically you for uh, lots of nitrogen gases formed very 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 quickly enough to inflate the bag before your head will impact the steering wheel um heat formed it could be those heat pads that you basically will click a little metal inside a gel and that will cause a sort of change in phase or a chemical reaction which gives out a lot of heat and so these pads are used to warm your hands up uh, for instance if you're cold on a mountainside so again those are examples of just standard chemical reactions helping people a slower chemical reaction of course is looking at this diagram down here 
the rusting of metal. It's a very, very slow chemical reaction, but it's still a chemical reaction because it's an oxidation of the iron. Uh, and so, of course, chemical reactions, uh, sometimes you can't see them. They're not very quick sometimes. They're not always spontaneous and, and, and rapid. They don't always give you huge sort of sort of um, visuals as though they've happened. For instance, rusting happens slowly over time. So, of course, there's an area of chemistry called chemical kinetics that look at the speed of these types of reactions. Different types of chemical reactions. So, again, essentially A and B are different atoms, essentially. So for synthesis, if you look at the top here, A and B are reacting together to form AB, a new material. Second one down, decomposition. AB is now uh, basically gone backwards. So this reaction has gone backwards and decomposed into just atom A and atom B. And this can happen as well. It's still a, a chemical reaction. If you've got A, B, but then C comes along, then a, perhaps C may replace B because AC may be a stronger bond. And therefore, that's a single replacement. A double replacement would be a scenario where you have an AB already and a CD compound already. And they'll essentially just swap. So A will go with D perhaps, and C may go with B. We call that a double replacement instead of the single replacement of it. So the best thing to sort of do is give you um, some sort of classic examples. Essentially, let's look at one very, very classic and very sort of often dangerous example nowadays is uh, the reaction of carbon with oxygen. So in other words, if you just heat carbon up in the presence of oxygen, then of course, we can form carbon dioxide. We do this because it gives out a lot of heat and therefore we can heat our homes. But the problem is, of course, that CO2 is dissipated into the atmosphere. And of course, it causes uh, uh, the greenhouse effect and uh, climate change, of course, global warming. Of course, CO2 is formed in other, in other ways as well. The fermentation of wines and beers, of course, can generate CO2. The breakdown of uh, more complex things like sugars through bacteria can basically break them down to their constituent carbons and oxygens and, and basically will just come out as carbon dioxide as well. So there are lots of different reactions that happen in the world that give you CO2. And this is why we're busy trying to sort of reverse these reactions or, or find ways of using up CO2 so that it's not all being leaked to the atmosphere and staying there and causing problems, huge problems. So let's look at some interesting reactions then. The thermite reaction, also called the Goldschmidt process, is essentially the reaction of an iron oxide, which is on the top left here, reacting with aluminium metal. And then you give it a bit of ignition. And then basically the aluminium have displaced the iron atoms, okay, to give you aluminium oxide and, and, and iron metal. And this is highly exothermic, as you can see by this reaction going on here. This is essentially a redox reaction. Now, redox, I'm not sure whether you'll have done this before, but redox is, a, is basically where there's one species is reduced and one species is oxidized. So reduction means the gain of electrons. So in other words, the iron three plus ions of the iron two oxide are reduced to iron zero, which just gives you the iron metal, which is what's used for welding of the tracks, of course, to give you the, the material that the tracks need. And of course, oxidation is where the aluminium is going from aluminium zero, which is the metallic aluminium, to oxidized aluminium three plus. So this is a redox reaction. So again, as I briefly mentioned, uses of this are welding of train tracks, pyrotechnics, and even weaponry, unfortunately. In terms of biology, let's have a look at this. This is the hydrolysis of food or the hydrolysis occurring in our bodies during food digestion in our stomach. So imagine that we've eaten some food, and which we do, and essentially they're made up of sort of sugar molecules linked together. Okay, oligosaccharides, for instance. This is actually sucrose, for instance, uh, where, well, this whole molecule is sucrose. And essentially hydrolysis means water. Hydro means water. Lysis means to break down. So essentially we've got something called sucrose. Uh, sorry, we've got something called sucrase in our bodies that basically are digestive enzymes. Enzymes speed up chemical reactions. And that, along with the water in our bodies, that's why we have to drink a lot of water, of course, and obtain a lot of water from food, helps break these bonds here or this bond here. As you can see, splitting the uh, whole molecule at the top here into a green glucose and the blue fructose. OK, so this is the type of reaction that's happening all the time in our bodies. And last but not least, probably the most important chemical reaction or process in uh, on Earth 
is photosynthesis, of course, because leaves are green. They're green because they contain a chemical called chlorophyll, and this can absorb sunlight. In other words, it can take a lot of energy from the sun and use it. And what it does is it combines uh, water and carbon dioxide to form glucose, and that's your source of energy, and oxygen. And of course, we know that this oxygen is, uh, is actually expelled by the tree, by the leaves, and that's great for us as well. So this is a really common uh, reaction that you've probably seen during GCSEs, uh, never mind A-levels. OK, so that's just a basic introduction to chemical reactions. For more, come and study with me at the University of Wolverhampton. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.